On the point of a purchase, I'd like to take up on a, a single word, very important. You wouldn't say, would you, that the United States has no purchase on the government of Israel? No, I wouldn't. No. I mean, in other words, if the Israelis are going to continue to build settlements in an identifiable, just a single suburb of Jerusalem, which, where most of the Arab population can produce documents proving they've owned their homes since before the British mandate, if, you notice, if American policy can't get them to stop building in that one identifiable suburb of Jerusalem, then there's no such thing as leverage or purchase. And Obama went to all the trouble to point out that this is a terrible thing. It's, he should have said more than he did, in my view, that it's theft as well as an obstacle to negotiations, and then walked away from that. So that a, a punk government like that of Netanyahu, under the influence of a ratbag religious party, the Shas party, crackpot orthodox party that ha happens to run the Ministry of Housing, is allowed to humiliate the United States, in, not just in the person of its vice president, who was there at the time, but its president and its Congress and its voters. And immediately the president backpedals, and now he's being attacked by some leading American Jewish organizations as being, in principle, anti-Israel. So he's had a fight with one of the Democratic Party's most important voting blocs. He's done nothing for the Palestinians, and he's made himself look like a jerk. This is not impressive. But when was American policy in the Middle East impressive? <laughs> well, actually, when I'll give you an example. When George Bush Sr. said to the Israelis, if you go on like this, we, I will ask Congress to suspend your loan guarantees, I thought that was extremely impressive. And so did everyone else in the Middle East, and it led to the nearest we've ever had to a proper peace conference, that was in Madrid. Bill Clinton chose to run that year from the right against Bush, uh, saying that he wanted, he thought Bush was being soft on Cuba, just like Kennedy. Hmm. Uh, uh, thought Eisenhower and Nixon were being soft on communism in Cuba, and also from the right on Israel, saying if he was president, the Israelis would not be subjected to this kind of pressure. So the last time that there was an impressive American policy, it was a Republican administration, and it was undone by the hero of every liberal in this room.